Geek Therapy Radio. Welcome to Geek Therapy Radio. I am your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Mental curator showing you around the museum of our mind. We all have different interests and different hobbies and different passions. So, of course, on Geek Therapy Radio, I might talk about a scientific development. I talked about the Strata Launch airplane that's only flown once so far but has the potential to change the hypersonic commercial aviation community or business for the better. That's a, There's a little sidetrack here, actually. Right out the gate on Geek Therapy Radio with something controversial to rant about. We need to stop bailing out airlines. Can we please stop continually bailing out the airline industry? But Johnny, lots of people... Jo- I understand. I get it. Has your air travel experience gotten better ever over the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years of flying? Or has it just been getting consistently worse and worse and worse and more sardine cans and you're packed in there like sardines and the air is recirculated and terrible? And, well, I guess the air circulation can't be really blamed on uh, the airline so much, but... The money grab, the travel experience, the the travel experience is just getting worse and worse and worse. It's a price we pay for cheaper tickets, and you know all the dynamics that go into running an airline. We get it, but do we need to keep continually bailing out the airlines? And I say that with the best intentions. And what spurred this was the supersonic air travel that the Strata launched, the world's largest airplane. Um, can take a hypersonic, supersonic prototype up 40,000 feet, launch it 40,000 feet. It's just a lot quieter. It bothers way less people while engineers work on making sonic booms less loud and less intrusive. So you can have supersonic flight from Los Angeles to New York City in an hour and a half or less than actually way less than that. 30 minutes, something like that. We can advance hypersonic flight, supersonic flight. So if we keep bailing out the airline industry, keep bailing out airlines, what is the incentive to improve? What is the incentive to improve the service to you, the customer, listening right now with your own, all most likely, multiple horror stories of times that you've had to use an airline to travel? Yes, it got you there way faster than driving or taking the bus or the train, but you had to saw your own legs off below the knee to make the flight. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Was was all that worth it to you? All the pain and suffering and spreading diseases to each other? Ah, uh, when if you don't bail out the airlines, it kind of forces when you know that you can fail. When you know that there's no safety. Now here's a good airplane sort of metaphor for it: a pilot will fly better and take more precautions and be better at flying when he knows the airplane doesn't have a parachute. Yes, there are some small airplanes now with parachutes. Versus when you have a parachute, if an airline knows, hey, if we F things up so bad continually for decades, we'll just get a few billion dollars from the government and we'll be right as rain. No. Without that incentive, without that safety net, without that parachute, the airline companies would only have to make things better. They would only have to earn your business more. Right now, we fly because we have to fly. We have to be somewhere in a certain amount of time. It's just the fastest way to do it. And the airlines have us by our carry-on, if you know what I mean. They know it. They stand there. You know the CEOs of airline companies are just sitting there rubbing their, uh, their, their chest. Don't get me wrong here. They're, they've got a finger or two on the nipple, and they're just, what's that? Tell me, oh, tell me how bad it is. Tell me how bad your flight was. Ooh, yeah, tell me. I love hearing how horrible it was because I know you don't have another choice. South Park did an episode about that, about about big telecom companies and internet and cable providers. Oh, they're the only game in town. So, oh, you tell me what your problem is. Oh, yeah, tell me. Mmm, I love bathing in the sweet honey of your customer complaints because where else are you going to go? We're not going to do anything. We will continually just find areas to cut, to improve that profit margin. Anything to improve the profits other than provide you with a good experience you're willing to pay for. 
anything but improve the service. Maybe if we if the airlines knew they weren't going to get bailouts, maybe company, you know, maybe Boeing's already doing this and other aircraft manufacturers are doing this. I'm not talking about the aircraft manufacturers necessarily, but maybe companies like Air United or Delta, is that even still around? Continental, am I dating myself? Have they all merged into one giant airline? Is that part of the problem? Is that there's not enough airlines anymore? It's all a monopoly? Not really. Maybe, oh gosh, Lufthansa, maybe British Airways and Air France and all of them would further invest money into supersonic travel. Maybe they'd see that the not the writing on the wall necessarily, but hey, if we can improve service, if we can maybe if we help fund or help push forward supersonic travel, maybe once it becomes viable and this when Boeing can make a new plane capable of supersonic flight, maybe it doesn't have to cost $10,000 a ticket like the Concorde did. Maybe it doesn't have to be as destructive, you know, to the environment as Concorde was, even though that's kind of misnomer because how many Concords are actually flying to have any real measurable impact on the environment, but I digress. Maybe there'd be an incentive if airlines knew they weren't going to get constant bailouts to make the service better. Maybe there'd be an incentive to invest in supersonic flight because supersonic flight would attract customers and business like no other. Could you imagine if United Airlines was the first airline to offer supersonic travel from Los Angeles to New York and you could be there within 30 minutes? You wouldn't have to offer the cheapest airfares ever because there is a value incentive in getting from Los Angeles to New York on a lunch break. Does that kind of make sense, what I'm saying? I think I'm going to reserve my broadcast, because I do have the podcast, the Geek Therapy Radio podcast, throughout the week. But I think I'm going to reserve the broadcasts for my more ranty subjects. So, just prepare yourselves. The broadcast might have more rants. I might get on the government a little bit more on these broadcasts. Only when it applies. Not in a political, left or right kind of way. But when the FAA, for instance, wants to infringe on our rights as RC aircraft hobbyists or drone hobbyists. Uncle Sam wants to step in constantly and tell us what we can't do with aircraft under five pounds. Screw you. Get out of my backyard. Get off my lawn. Who are you to say that because it weighs over a pound now, I have to register it and have it operating a GPS on a cellular network all the time? I've talked the entire show about that before. And I'm coming up on a break here. Out the, out the gate with it. More Geek Therapy Radio coming up. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Don't go anywhere. Preach, Bill Withers. Preach. Uh, the podcast is available. Favorite podcast player, of course, around here. We prefer the iHeartRadio app. Just search for Geek Therapy Radio in your favorite podcast player. Look for the red, white, and black color scheme, and you'll be good to go. If you like the uh, podcast, heck, if you like the broadcast, tell a friend. Now more than ever, Geek Therapy Radio has... A purpose. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to think it's always had a purpose. It's always been this kind of, I used to call it the oasis in the desert of politics. Not that I'm afraid to get political from time to time, like I mentioned in the previous segment, when it serves uh, serves the interest of the hobbyist. Um, but I tend to keep it more of, it's it's an open invitation. I, I also used to say, I, I like to draw a circle in the sand rather than a line in the sand. I have this experiment that if you line up uh, a picnic table, put a picnic table 100 yards long on a football field, and then have come, some people sit on one side of the picnic table and another group of people sit on the other side of the picnic table. And the only thing, the only rule is no politics. So they're sitting there. You can't talk about politics. You will find so much more in common. The, the chatter and the talk will just pick up to a roar. People will be talking about, oh, you like Star Wars 2? Your favorite? Oh, what did you, you think of the new Rise of Skywalker? What did you think of uh, Star Trek? Remember that episode where Captain Picard goes and punches the Ferengi in the face? And remember the 
Romulans are always pestering them. And, oh, I love to build Lego. Oh, do you have this Lego set? I love building Lego. Oh, I have a kid. We're back into Lincoln Logs. I forgot how much I love Lincoln Logs. I, I, my kid was doing painting to get it painting the other day. I used to be a painter and just helping my, my child paint or goofing around with him has re-sparked this energy in me to paint on canvas. I love canvas. Do you like pastels? Oh, I prefer oil, prefer oil painting or I prefer watercolors, whatever. You'll find all sorts of things you have in common. You might say, I love cutting the lawn. The smell of a fresh cut lawn is, <laughs> I almost said an aphrodisiac, Maybe, depending on who you are, maybe you love the smell of fresh, fr fresh cut grass and it's great geek therapy for you to geek out about cutting your lawn just right or getting out there and mowing the lawn. There's not much better some days than just sitting, get, grabbing a beer out of the kitchen, taking a swig of a nice ice cold shiner, whatever you want. We're not judging you. Bud Light, whatever. No judgment here. Maybe it's a fine craft beer. Take a swig of it, set it on the trunk of your car. And you mow the lawn, you do a couple lines on the lawn, and you grab the beer off the uh, car again and chug it. I wouldn't suggest putting the beer on the handle of the uh, lawn mower because it's shaking too much. It's just too much shaking going on. The beer's flat by the time you cut that first line. They should make a beer with the aftertaste of fresh cut lawn. Now I'm geeking out hardcore. <laughs> Do you think that maybe a, a Eighth Wonder should put a few grass clippings in their next vat? I bet you... Do you think that would sell? Maybe not with the gasoline exhaust smell, but fresh cut lawn. A few fresh glass grass clippings. Just as an experiment. Do one batch. Eighth Wonder, if you're listening, which I know you're probably not. Although you might be because What's on Tap Radio was on just a little while ago. Eighth Wonder, any brewery. Southern Star, I don't care who you are. Maybe make a batch. And I'm talking I'm talking maybe just a sixer. <laughs> as little as a sixer. You already have a uh, a beer called Lawnmower. Why not, you know, make an IPA that has the aftertaste of grass clippings? And the aftertaste I had no idea I'd get off on this tangent. I'll get back to my mental experiment in a second. Um but they make beers with the aftertaste of, you know, strawberries or, or grapefruits. It's really, really good. Uh, Ruby Red. Shiner makes Ruby Red. It's delicious. It's not, it doesn't taste like a grapefruit. It only has the aftertaste of a grapefruit. So it's not a sweet beer. It just has the aftertaste of, of grapefruit. Maybe you can make a batch of IPA, just a sixer, just a six pack of IPA that has, that fills your nose with the notes of fresh cut lawn. Because a lot of us might be geeks about mowing the lawn. That might be our, our geek therapy uh, for the week. We have kids. We have things going on. Get out to cut, cut the grass. Put your earphones on. I just ordered another uh, belt for my Walkman, for my cassette deck. Remember Walkman? Walkman? I ordered a belt to replace the belt because I want to listen to tapes, mixtapes I've made. That's just me. I like working with analog tape a lot. So I ordered a new belt for a Walkman because I love mowing the lawn, listening to music. A lot of us, that's our escape. That's our solitude. My brother told me, and I promise I'll get back to the mental exercise of, of people from all walks of life sitting on either end of a picnic table having a discussion, politics free. Get back to that in a second. My brother told me recently, <sighs> he's going to hate me for saying this, uh, that one his me time he very much values his throne me time if you catch my drift that uh dropping the kids off at the pool so to speak is like a certain amount of time each day where the kids aren't in the bathroom the phone's not ringing he's alone he can think he can get his, some geek therapy in there and maybe do i don't know what he's doing on the toilet I've written some, I'm a musician, I've written some of my best songs on the toilet. Don't you laugh at me. Don't you laugh. I know there's a lot of musicians listening right now, songwriters. You know, you know you've written your best work. Some of your best work. You've come up with your best chord progressions on the toilet. Don't lie. Do not lie. Especially now in quarantine times, the bathroom, hopefully is one last bastion of solitude. You've sat, musicians, guitarists, I know you've sat on the toilet with a six string. I know you have. 
Don't lie. And you have written some cool riffs on there. You've some you've come up with some cool stuff and it's the bathroom. There's good acoustics. Why am I getting so fired up about this? Yes, I do have personal experience with it. Yes, I do know my own mother-in-law listens to this. Susie, your son has done some good work musically on the throne. Just putting it out there. Sorry, not sorry. So before I put my foot in my mouth even further, I think we'll go back to that thought exercise, that experiment. So, okay, you have the most diverse group of people sitting on either side of a hundred yard long picnic table. The only rule was you can't talk about politics. So they're talking about favorite hobbies. They're inspiring others to uh, get into that hobby. Oh, that hobby sounds cool. I'll get into hobby. You know, I never thought about knitting that way. Maybe I'll start to knit. You know, I never thought about woodworking that way. I've got a table saw in my garage. That's just collecting dust. I need to fire that thing up again. Try to make me a chair and then trade tips and you're talking and you're trading ideas and you're having a good time. The end of the experiment is that someone gets on the PA in the stadium and says, congratulations, we've pre-screened everybody. Everybody sitting on the left is a flaming liberal. Everybody on the right is a staunch, entrenched, you're never going to change my mind, conservative. But y'all didn't know that for the past hour. Y'all had no idea. Y'all got along with each other great. Y'all bonded over so many more great things than you realize that you had in common. How would you have ever picked up tips on, you know, what servo motor to use on the rudder of your electric airplane? Where have you ever learned any tips or tricks from, oh, oh Bob Ross, and I saw Bob Ross doing this thing on the, on the painting one day, and, and you learned that from the person sitting next to you that turned out to be conservative. Hey, it turns out that despite everything you see and say on Facebook, you don't actually hate each other. That you hate each other and you extremely dislike each other over one thing that you don't have in common. You just spent an hour talking about all the things that you do have in common, about a myriad of different things. You covered covered a myriad of different topics. Stop hating each other based on the one different thing, based on the one difference of opinion. That's the thought experiment. And I know a lot of you listening right now might be thinking, didn't this guy just spend two or three minutes talking about how he plays guitar on the toilet? Yes, I did. And now I'm going to play more Bill Withers on the way out here. You're listening to Geek Therapy Radio. Thank you so much for (laughs) putting up with me today. Take it away, Bill. We'll be right back. If you only knew you'd wish that you were in my shoes, you just keep on using me until you use me up. Until you use me up. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Can I just say, this is purely anecdotal purely anecdotal but I have never personally met somebody who says I'll just use an example that is uh, poignant to today's climate I have never met anybody and I'm going to be fair with this I'm going to give another example after this that you know me I have the audacity of trying to be fair I have never met anybody who says vocally, repeatedly, that they hate Trump supporters. Never met anybody who says they hate, H-word, capital, hate Trump reporters, supporters, who doesn't also hate themselves deeply. At least hate one thing about themselves deeply. And I don't mean that to, to... poke at those people who hate themselves it's usually i'm just saying if you know people in your life who who just constantly spread negativity who have focused on to one group of people and say that they hate those people and they're constantly belittling that group of people having thinking they have some superiority complex or making fun of them constantly it's like dude okay your your obsession with trump supporters is a little weird now also with biden supporters You can be conservative and just, hey, I 
hate any liberal. I hate liberals. They're ruining the country. I hate them. I'd wager there's at least something about yourself that you hate if you don't just completely hate yourself. And I, I don't mean that in a, in a belittling way I, and to diminish anything. There are people we're going through real things. And what do we do when we're going through some real struggles and maybe severe depression? Or maybe we hate ourselves or think we hate ourselves. We lash out. We lash out at the group that we see that most picks at us, that most challenges, that most exposes the open, our own open wound. And for a lot of us in this current political climate, it's to hate Trump supporters or it's to hate liberals. You can you can disagree. Believe me, here's the difference here. You can severely disagree with somebody else's political opinions. But it's a problem when you start actively hating them. It's a problem when groups like Antifa actively go out and try to harm conservatives. Physically, get in their face, harass them. Same thing with conservatives. It's wrong. It's crossing a line when you start going to liberal rally, rallies and start hurling insults or, or worse or threatening harm on somebody else because they're liberal. That exposes more about you than it does about them. Big time. Big time. You see it all the time on YouTube. YouTube comments used to be a dumpster fire, but now they're getting better. Twitter's a great example of this. People love to do this on Twitter. They will be at each other's throats on Twitter. Constant negativity. The only thing they ever post on Twitter is something negative, is something vile, is something revolting, it's something hateful. Is there any person in their right mind who sees all this filth Spewing from this person's fingertips and thinks that person must have it going on. That person must have their life under control. That person must have a ton of self-confidence. Nope. Level-headed people see that kind of smut in mud, in mud flinging, in crap, in scat, in the S word, in whatever, and think, whoa. I hope that person gets help because there's a difference between that person and somebody who merely disagrees. I can have a discussion with anybody on any side of the political aisle and be perfectly fine with their with a difference of opinion. There's no way. See, the thing is, even if you're liberal or even if you're conservative talking to another conservative or a liberal talking to another liberal, there is no way on this earth, on God's green earth, that you're going to agree on everything. And if your first emotion at disagreement is, I hate this person now. They disagree. They're wrong. I know the right way. God himself came down to me yesterday and said, this is the right way. Do it like this. He told me, and I just mean in a specific issue. So I don't mean, you know, the way you live your life or uh, your religious beliefs. I have my own religious beliefs. I believe in God 100%. I have my own relationship with God. I know that's foreign to a lot of people. Some people might think that's a bunch of hooey. Fine. I don't hate you for thinking that. There's a good example. I have a lot of atheist friends, actually. I saw a church sign recently that said God prefers friendly atheists over hateful Christians. Bingo. That is 100% true. That has to be true. Well, does it have to be true? It's just my opinion that it's true. There's a lot of really good, kind atheists who do so much good in this world and spread so much joy and happiness and love in this planet. And then there are Christians, some Christians, who do nothing but spread hatred. Do you think that when the leaders of the Westboro, Westboro Baptist Church get to the pearly gates alongside an atheist, if there is a heaven and we get to heaven and both of us are, you know, being judged or whatever, do you think that God's going to sit there and be like, hey, Westboro Baptist, you hurt so many people in my name. You have destroyed so many people's lives. You have made so many people feel worthless and ashamed, all while doing it in my name. Do you think I'm going to let you in here? Do you think I'm going to smile upon your actions on the earth using my name to tear people down? 
versus turning to the atheist and saying, you know, I know you didn't believe in me, but you did so much good in this world. You devoted yourself to science. You devoted yourself to medicine. You created vaccines and cures. You did my work on the earth, whether you knew it or not. You were one of my instruments, and you did so much good in this world. You didn't have to believe in me. You didn't even have to believe in me. Matter of fact, you didn't believe in me, and you still did good. Versus somebody who did believe in me and did evil from the first moment they set foot on this earth to their last dying day. They committed evil in my name. You committed good not using my name. You didn't even believe in me. This person used my name to commit evil. Child molesters. Priest touching kids. It's a... Oof. God prefers... This is just the sign I saw on the church's marquee. God prefers nice atheists to evil Christians. Good atheists to evil Christians. Does that line up? This is, I'm just asking this. If you're a religious person out there, does, does, does that line up? Does that statement, God prefers a good atheist to an evil Christian, does that line up with your sense of justice? I'd have to ask myself that question as a Christian. Does that line up with my sense of justice? I would say that it would. I'm not God. I could never pretend to be God. No one really knows what or who God is. That's a, It's a constant... <laughs> The faithful are constantly searching that. That's why we live our lives is constantly trying to know that. It's a relationship. We're constantly figuring it out and doing the best we can. But you start crossing the line when you start using that walk in faith, if you want to call it like that, to hurt other people. Or to deny science. There's pastors, not my pastor, but there, I've read and heard of other pastors around there disregarding the CDC, disregarding all the advice to stop getting in big groups of people and getting each other sick. You know, trusting that God will protect them from the spread of disease. And part of me, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, you know, I... Part of me agrees with that, but also part of me thinks that God sent doctors and very smart people here to tell us, oh... Maybe the maybe God's way of protecting us from communicating disease to each other is by using the instrument of doctors to say, stop coughing and sneezing and shaking hands and kissing each other right now. Just for right now, chill out. Also, the church, by the way, Christians out there who are who think that their government's coming down and they're just trying to destroy your church, the church never was the building. Never once was the church ever biblically the building. The church has always been the people. Always. That has always been the church. Not the brick and mortar. Not the wood and nails. The people. What does God say in the Bible? Wherever two or more meet up, there I am. Guess what? We can meet up over live streaming now. Over video, over the internet. We're live streaming services Technology is not the devil. Science is not the devil. What if science and technology, what not what if, science and technology is the blessing. Science and technology is the miracle. What if I told you that my personal belief is that science and technology was God at work? Using our big, beautiful pink brains we're endowed with to cure and help each other and not tear each other down. What the heck was I talking about at the beginning of this segment? I forget. Airplanes or something? More Geek Therapy Radio coming up. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be spicy today. Baby, 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 when you love me, I can't get enough. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. I'm, of course, your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. We're having a feisty, spicy one today. If I do say so myself. But, you know, this is one of those episodes of Geek Therapy Radio where it's really therapeutic for me. Just to, to vent, really, to get the juices flowing and get, get feisty with it a little bit. Um, I mentioned earlier that I was going to try, maybe, going forward to reserve 
the broadcast that you're listening to, which I also podcast the broadcast. It's 2020. The broadcast is promotion for the podcast. Um, But I mentioned earlier that I might start leaning the broadcast towards more of this kind of fiery, more opinionated stuff. Of course, it's still an open dialogue and maybe opinionated isn't the right word, even though It's going to be anybody who has any sort of microphone is going to have their own opinions. We all have our own opinions. You listening right now have your own opinions. You may agree or disagree with my opinions. That's fine. As long as we don't hate each other for it, because hating each other over difference of opinions is stupid. That is. (laughs) It's dumb. Hating people over differences of opinion. Um, but I'm gonna. I might go forward from here and use, reserve the broadcast. So if if a subject comes up during the week and I want to talk about it, um, I'm gonna reserve the broadcast for the kind of maybe the spicier, more more lively things. Not that I won't get spicy or saucy in the podcast. I can, and I often do. All I'm saying is the podcast is where it's going to be the more nitty gritty geek stuff. We're all geeks about something, so maybe the podcast is where I'll reserve the more technically geeky stuff, if you if you know what I mean. Well, we might do a more more of a deep dive into specific geek subjects. You know how what settings to set your brushless DC servo motors to, and whatever. I'm just talking out my butt right now because I got nothing specific in mind. Maybe you are a, a train hobbyist, a train enthusiast. Maybe we'll talk about the specific different sounds and what causes the different sounds in train engines as they drive by your neighborhood, as they drive by the crossroad tracks. People, oh, that's a General Electric, whatever. Oh, that's a, a Mercedes. Does Mercedes even make train engines? I don't know. See, that's what I'm talking about. We might get to the nitty gritty of things like that more so in the podcast. When you get nitty gritty with subjects and with our geek things, it doesn't help to have very strict, hard-timed segments like you have on a radio broadcast. Uh, my radio broadcast and most shows on this network or on this uh, station are 8 minutes, 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 10 minutes. 8 minute first segment, 10 minute second, 11 third, 10 minute uh, fourth segment. We're in the fourth segment. Now it's 10 minutes. So 10 minute segment, I've already chewed up three minutes here. It's not conducive to getting doing a deep dive on a specific geek topic. So I might try, try to reserve the podcast for more of those deep dives and keep the uh, podcast or the broadcast a little more, a little more spicy, uh, a little more free to explore kind of abstract. And, and maybe if the FAA is trying to infringe on drones, maybe I can talk about stuff like that in the broadcast. Who knows? I'm still working it out. I'm a geek about this radio stuff, so I'm still working out. I will always be working out what I do and don't talk about on this show. But today in this broadcast, in this segment here, I do want to at least touch on a couple of specific geeky things that I've got going on in my own life. Uh, Those who follow me on social media and who listen to the podcast every day know that I've got this experiment going on um, with micro cassette tape, not standard cassette tape, those micro cassette tape recorders that you use for dictation and other whatnots using uh, answering machines. Well, you used to back in the day, micro cassette. I have this idea and it's coming along nicely to mix a song that entirely uses micro cassette. So what I mean is record the kick drum by itself to the micro cassette and then play that micro cassette into my computer on its own kick drum track. Then erase everything on the micro cassette, record the snare drum by itself onto the micro cassette, play the micro cassette into the computer on its own snare drum track. So basically I have 16, 15, 16 tracks of a rock song, but every instrument and the vocals came off of micro cassette. Why? This is a challenge. This is an experiment. No one in their right mind would ever ask for, but it's fun. And to me, and to a few other people, apparently, it's, it, it's this fascinating, people are waiting for the results of that experiment. How well can I mix a song? Can I make, can I make anything workable from it? The typical frequency response of a microcassette is between 400 and 4,000 hertz. That's limiting. Not limit like audio limiting. That's, that's a limited frequency response to do anything with. Um, in my initial 
dabblings here, my initial experiments here, I have dumped all the tracks into the into my um, DAW, which is Cakewalk Sonar. I might use Pro Tools a little bit too, but in this case, I'm using uh, Cakewalk Sonar. I'm finding that I can extract, surprisingly, I can extract some low end out of there. I have to stack, I kid you not, four or five equalizers on top of each other. So I have to use one. So for the kick drum, there's nothing there. So I boost, you know, 60 to 80 hertz by 24 decibels. Still, you know, a little bit, but still not much there. Open up another EQ push the low end up 24 decibels more 48 decibels total now of low end boost and there's a little bit more there three four five more compressors until i actually have the thud and thunk of the low end of a kick drum I, to me that's fascinating it's going to be fascinating the fact that i can extract some low end from instruments so from the kick uh from the bass guitar but i can't do jack squat with the high end I can't pull any high end out of the micro cassette. So there's not going to be any air to the vocals. Um, electric guitars mostly should be fine. Uh, hi hats, it's even hard to reproduce on AM radio. It's going to be tough. I can't, there, I can't get any natural air to anything because it all exists in the high end. There's nothing there to work with on micro cassette tape. But that's what I'm geeking out about right now. That's it's that's kind of. The sprinkles, the sugary sprinkles of life, and that brings me joy to, to do things like that. So that's what I'm up to. Uh, I also received a new solar panel, a new 200 watt solar panel to build, keep building my little off grid solar generator setup. Hopefully now I can run my garage door opener off of that. I have a, a 1000 watt, 2000 watt peak pure sine wave inverter. The idea is that if everything hits the fan and you can't even get gasoline, I'm not a prepper, so to speak, but I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, if you know what I mean, that I can still run my refrigerator and a 2000 watt peak pure sine wave inverter can more than run a refrigerator. I've done my kilowatt tests. I have a kilowatt adapter that I put in the wall and I see when the compressor kicks on the refrigerator at most it pulls under a little just a brief moment it pulls a little bit under 900 watts then it settles into like or there around 150 watts or so so I can run my fridge off it keep my food cold keep my ice ice um, I can also heat up coffee with it um, uh, I can also run an air conditioner a window unit air conditioner that pulls about 500 watts I can run that off the setup. I have got a couple lead acid batteries as the battery bank that constantly stay charged. And you might ask yourself, well, why not get a, a, a gas generator? Well, I have three gas generators. Since I have that thousand watt pure sine wave inverter, the DeLorean is a gas generator. My wife's car is a gas generator. My daily driver is a gas generator. I can I know that little four cylinder generators or one cylinder generators are more efficient. I got it. But in an emergency situation where I need more power, I've got three three generators. Cars, your car is a gas generator. It's just not as efficient as a little, you know, two horsepower, 1500 watt, whatever. Um, but I'm good. They can't kill the sun. The sun will always be there, even if it's cloudy you're still harvesting electricity. So I'm excited about that. Excited about my micro cassette experiment and my solar new solar panels. Uh, take care, everybody. Know that we're all geeks about something. Embrace your geek thing. You are worthy of love, both giving and receiving love. Are you listening to me? You are worthy of love, both giving and receiving love. And you are also worthy of your own self-confidence and self-worth. And one way I think that we are able to do that, get some self-confidence, is by embracing our geek thing through a little bit of geek therapy. Try to fit in some geek therapy each day. Make sure to support your local small businesses when and if you can, please. Uh, Best Automotive in Kingwood on North Park. They are such a great mechanic. They'll take care of your classic car or your modern car. Support local business. Support local business. And I'll see you next week.